Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. How's everybody doing out there? And tonight we've got a great guest, somebody who knows the business really well. It's Lau Lapidus. How you doing, Lau? I'm so awesome. I'm so super LA awesome right now, Dan. Really? And yeah. See, I, I thought you were on the East Coast and you're here in LA. You, I'm like, you know, the VO Where's Waldo? Like, where am I today? You know, today <laughs> I'm in LA because I couldn't pass it up. There were so many cool things going on on your coast. That's right. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're out here. You know, we can almost yell to each other from here. Anyway, <laughs> if you've got a question for Lau about anything that we talk about, throw it in the chat room because mm -hmm. Jeff Holman's in there and he is writing down everything that you guys are saying in the chat room, or at least your questions. And we'd love to hear from you and let, you, let us know that you're watching and enjoying the show. So are we right? George is actually over here. So we're in the same studio tonight. Anyway. It's time for voiceover body shop. Are you everybody ready? Let's make it happen. Let's go. It's time for voiceover body shop. Brought to you by voiceoveressentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. Voiceover heroes become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, greetings out there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Easier to sync when you're like within an earshot. I know. I was like Makes automatically it... trying to say it off sync so that I, we would be in sync, realizing, wait a minute, I don't have no, to do no. that. See, so, because he's actually just over there, and that makes <laughs> makes it a little easier. But anyway. It's nice to be back, here. Back, back to the center cam here. Well, we're into the holiday season now, and- Everybody's like, what do, what do I get everybody? And of course, all of your spouses and significant others are all like, you want a what? <laughs> Holiday season means everybody in LA drives like, well. Badly. Poorly. <laughs> yes. Aggressively and angrily. Well, That's it's what it's been like that for a couple of months. <laughs> it you know, gets I, worse right around now. <laughs> yeah, since I got mine, somebody hit me from behind a while ago. Yeah, if you're going to. It's been going around, hasn't it? Yeah, if you're going to drive in LA, drive a tank. Oof, or a really old beater. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, have a have a weekend car, <laughs> yeah, like, and trailer it <laughs> to Nevada, <laughs> and go drive it there. All right. Well, tonight, hey, we're going to talk about voiceover because, by the way, that's what this show is about. Uh, we've got a great guest tonight, and again, if you've got a question for Lau Lapidus, throw it in the chat room. Because Jeff Holman's there, and he is taking down your questions, and we want to hear from you because we know you're in there somewhere, and you want to, you want more information. Perhaps she will tell you everything that we need to know, and I will try and coax everything out of her. But if you've got something perhaps that I forgot, throw it in the chat room right now. Whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on YouTube Live, that's right. And uh, we'll get you covered. That's right. Or just yell really loud and maybe he'll hear you. Anyway, let's introduce our guest tonight. Lau Lapidus is founder and president of Lau Lapidus Company, a boutique coaching, training, and production company for voice talent and actors. Programs include hybrid, online, and in-person workshops, seminars, one-on-one -on -one personalized coaching, and showcases in New York City, L.A., and online. Lau's media and broadcasting career coaches all work in television, film, radio, and theater. That's quite a widespread. Let's welcome, for the first time to our show, Lau Lapidus. Lau, how you doing? Hey, I'm awesome. I'm so excited to be here. Yay, this is my inaugural Dan and George time. I'm excited. Thank you all right. for having me on. Yeah, only took 11 years, but, you know, <laughs> we're, we'll get to you. <laughs> Anyway, and thanks for joining us during the holiday season right now. Um, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into voiceover, as or as somebody I know likes to say, 
your journey. Oh, my journey. It sounds <laughs> ever so important. Well, I will, I'll, I'll keep it kind of short and brief and say it's been a whole lifetime journey. You know, we always joke at the studio, like we're all in overnight success, right? Yeah, we're, we're a 40 year overnight success. <laughs> so I literally have been, you know, in performance and entertainment my entire life. I've never not done it. I've never had another career. So even as a child, when I started out, I was primarily a dancer, actually. I was a dancer. I didn't speak. I didn't talk. I just danced. And I did that for a long time. I danced with the Boston Ballet. I danced with Bob Fosse Troupe. I loved it. And I found my rhythm. And thank goodness I did that. Because in voiceover, we need that so much, that kinesthetic rhythm. So I found that as a very young kid and kept it in my muscles, kept it in my body, became an actor. And started working professionally when I was about 15. I was hired for my first uh, touring troupe uh, as, a, as an actor at 15 years old. And I really never stopped working since then. I did regional. I did repertory. I did equity theater. I have a very rich theatrical background. And um, long story short, went, went for my graduate degree and was selected to go to one of the top actor programs. So I did my residency, my graduate studies at UC Irvine in California. And it only took me four years to get in, but who's counting? Um, and it was it was well worth the wait. I got to tell you, I was I was so excited. I was 29 years old at the time. I had performed everywhere. I had acted. I had danced. I had started voiceover, just started voiceover. Didn't really know what it was, but just started my journey on voiceover. Um, and then got into the MFA program and just said yes to it. So I moved 3,000 miles away from my Boston home to my new Orange County home in California <clears throat> and did three years full time in a residency at UC Irvine, which really was like the, the turner for me. It really just changed the whole trajectory of my life. It was a program of marriage. I was married to it day and night. It was full-time residency. It was a full tuition scholarship. I had a TA ship to teach both undergraduates and in the community. And I just said yes to everything. I was one of those performers that I just didn't think too much about work. I was intellectual and analytical, but not when it came to work. I just said yes. And I took all the work that came my way because I really didn't know where it was going to lead me. I just loved performing. I loved voicing things. I loved bringing scripts to life. I love bringing copy to life. So whether it was improv, whether it was Shakespeare, I did a ton of Shakespeare, um, whether it was you know, a voiceover ad copy. I just said yes to it. I was like a, one of those yes people. And, uh, and then when I got my, my graduate degree, I fell into teaching. So teaching was really, for me, while I was performing, the thing that helped me survive. Um, I had that really incredibly important piece of paper, that MFA degree, that allowed me to walk in. And I just, by happenstance, ended up at some of the top business schools, which very, very strange, very strange turn of events because I had no business education. I had no knowledge really about business per se. And I, I, I said, okay, let's go with this. So um, I started creating programs um, for some of the top business colleges around Boston. And that was primarily for um, performance and speaking and MFA track students. Those were people that were, you know, about to launch businesses, people right. who were about to pitch their products, their services. Now, granted, I'm going to be honest with you and your audience. I knew nothing about this. Like, I didn't go to business school. I didn't have an MBA. I had an MFA. <laughs> I, I was like, you know, I was like selling. I was all of a sudden, I was thrust into an arena where they were saying, teach us how to sell, teach us how to speak, teach us how to deliver as if our whole uh, life depended on it, which, you know, could be for an angel investor getting money for their business, putting right. all their savings into right. something. So the stakes were very high, just like actors who study stakes. Yeah. The stakes I, I were think very high. Yeah, I think it's really important because we're always trying to emphasize to all the people that George and I talk to and, and other people that, that are mentoring, they forget that freelance acting is a business. 
and that you're the one responsible for getting the work and all that. And too many people are like, no, I'm going to get the show business. I'm going to get an agent and boom, I'm, I'm going to be, a, you know, but it doesn't work that way, does it? That's right. And and it, and it really is true. When you teach something, Dan, it, it, it shows you what you know and it shows you what you don't know. So how you impart what you know to the different levels of student that are out there taught me how to appeal in a client-centered way to a, a, a business forum, right? I didn't know it yet. I didn't know I was going to open a business, but I knew I loved teaching. I was good at directing. I loved leading things. I loved being at the head of organizations. Like that was um, probably for 10 years teaching at all of these schools, you know, Babson University and Harvard and Boston uh, University. And it all landed at, at, when I was 40 years old at opening a studio. And that's when ah. I opened my studio 14 years ago. All right. Well, you uh, again, we're talking with Lala Pitas, and we're going to be talking more about the voiceover business because that's what we talk about here. And if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. There's got to be something you want to know that perhaps George and I won't get to. And perhaps you're curious about. All you have to do is write it in the chat room, whether you're in Facebook Live or on YouTube Live. And you should be in the chat rooms and interacting with everybody else that's watching this show at this very moment right now. Uh, so you've got these two companies. You've got Lollapitas Company, which is your studio, and MCVO, which is an agency. How do you, how do you balance those two things? Well, you know, it's an interesting question. I was thinking about this question myself, like how do, how do we balance? How do we balance what we do in our life, whether we're performers, business owners, um, both, you know, parents, I'm a mother of two kids. I mean, how do we balance all of that? And I think, you know, primarily for me, the baseline of everything is just the sheer love and enjoyment and passion for what I'm doing. I would do it whether I got paid or not. I want to get paid and I do get paid, but it's the kind of thing where I can't not do it. I can't imagine not doing it. I remember Meryl Streep was getting interviewed at one time and they asked her about her career and they said, if you, I think she was at the studio doing an interview and, the, and, and James Lipton said, if you could do anything else, what would you have done? She said, I, I can't imagine doing anything else. I guess I would have been a photographer, maybe, but I can't imagine really making a different choice in my life. And I sort of feel that way. So the balance factor really comes from this ideology that I'm not giving myself a choice, right? We, failure is not an option. It's just it's a life. It's what we call a lifestyle business. It's not a business that we're creating, uh, creating for three or four years, then we're going to sell it and move on to another kind of business. It just isn't that kind of thing for me. It has to be integrated with my life. And I'm so fortunate that my family, my, my network, my group of really close family and friends completely are a part of it. They support it. They work in it. They love it. They get it. And if they don't, um, then they're just like, they're total supporters. If they work in something else, they're total supporters. I don't have anyone in my my tribe that says, don't do that. I, you can't make a living at that. I don't know why you're doing that. Because you have to have a really positive mindset crew that surrounds you to keep you going during the tough times and during the tough days. Because it Absolutely. is hard to balance. It is. There's no question about it. It's and And the longer you go and the more you do it, the easier it gets to figure out how to balance it, but the more intensive it gets because, you know, if we're adding on services, if we're adding on products, if we're scaling now online, which we're now a hybrid, we started out as a very personal in-person business. We're still very personalized, but we're hybrid. Like 90% of our people are now online. So figuring out how to, how to re-envision, how to recraft, how to recreate, the thing that you have created from the beginning takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of mind power. It takes a lot of, you know, as my dad would always say, fire in the belly. That's like what, what makes you get up every morning and put the key in the door, the proverbial door right. is the thing that makes you successful. Right. Absolutely. Now, what, one of the things that I, I find fascinating is that you know, George and I, and you, we, we do, you know, live presentations and we were coaching and we're teaching and doing webinars and seminars and stuff. And people ask lots of questions and sometimes they don't know exactly 
who it is they're asking of the question if they know the right answer. It's like, like, what's the difference between an agent and a coach? Because you do both. And what are some of the questions that perhaps people give you that are like, well, that's not an agent question. That's a coach question, or it's not a coach question. It's really an agent question. What are some examples of that? And what can people learn not to ask? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a weird oxymoron to say you need to ask the question before you ask the question. But it's really important that you have this close network of people that you can rely upon to go out to ask the question and test it out before you ask the question of the actual party that you need to ask it of. And sometimes you get the answer so that you don't e even need to ask the question of the person you were going to ask. So a good example might be, you know, if I'm in front of, say, an agent, a lot of voiceover talent are going to go up in front of agents, whether they're submitting, cold submitting on email, or they're doing a live showcase, or whatever the case may be, they're going to go up in front of an agent to find representation, right? A common question, and I just experienced it the last four days in my LA boot camp, and I couldn't believe I heard this. A common question is um, to an agent, um, what do you do? And and I think, okay, it's okay to ask a question like that because you want to learn what they do. But it's not okay to ask that question to the agent because the agent would say, hey, listen, go online, go check it out talk to your friends, da, da, da. You can, anything that you can answer easily by Google or by some of your friends, don't ask that person because that's a direct giveaway that you're really green, that you're really starting and that you don't know. Or asking a question that's completely inappropriate that would be for someone else. So for instance, I ask an agent, um, can you... Um, um, can you give me feedback on this and tell me what you think about these reads? And the agent thinks, no, I can't. That's not my job. That's not what I do. I market you. If you're ready to market, send me your stuff. And then I'm going to move you like a house. We're a commodity, right? In a good way. But we are a product. We're product-based. I always use a real estate broker as an example. It's like, it's like inviting in a real estate uh, broker and saying, Hey, can you give me advice on this, on this room? Like, how should I decorate this? And should I put the furniture there? Well, once in a while, they'll give you a couple ideas if they want to sell the house. But much of the time, they don't have time to do that. They come in, they do a walk around, they price it, they say, Hey, when you fixed it up, when you flipped it, when you're ready to sell it, you call me and then I'm going to come out and I'm going to move that very quickly for you. So it's, in my mind, it's kind of similar to that. I mean, no one's going to get super angry or offended by it, but there, but it's a tip off that you're not yet a pro or you're not yet working because you don't know the roles of the people involved with the team that you're putting together, what they, what their jobs are. Mm -hmm. Um, once again, we're talking with Lau Lapidus, and we're talking about the voiceover business and coaching and agents and all these things that sort of sort of commingle into all the stuff that we do. And again, if you've got a question, you can throw it into one of the chat rooms, depending on where you're watching, whether on YouTube Live or on Facebook Live. Is there like a, is there like a roadmap kind of a thing that like, you know, kind of lays out the structure of how these kinds of voiceover you know, businesses operate? Like... You know, like go to this place and you can see at a glance how this all connects. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's all over the place. It's like the world, right? It's like yeah. you go to the world. Everyone has their own network. Everyone is developing their own little tribe. Um, where we go and how we learn our information, I don't believe is streamlined in any way. I think it's very large. The reservoir is very big. Um, mm -hmm. But I think over time in anything, whether you're an actor, we're tradesmen, we're craftsmen, we're putting together our tools, you know, we're getting our techniques in order, we're figuring out what market we want to work in, what the pricing is, you know, all that stuff. So whatever market you're about to work in, or you currently are working in, you can start asking people who are working in that market. Oftentimes, they're very willing to talk to you, very willing to help you. Um, I always say, Try very hard not to make people your competitors. Try to make them your colleagues because we all work together. It's one big family in a very interesting way. Like the world is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And so if I'm going to be super petty about other coaches or other producers, right, we can't do that because we have to learn. We're constantly learning best practices. We're constantly learning like 
how to find out what is the industry standard. That's what we're hmm. going for. And I can't, like, I look, I'll be honest with you. Can I be honest? All right, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, can Start we talk? Now. Sure, go for Listen, it. can we talk? All right, listen. Start I'm now. I'm 54. I'm going to be 55 years old, okay? I can say that because I'm not an actress anymore. All right, here's the deal. I know I don't look a day over 30, but anyway, that's a conversation for another day. My point is, I'm constantly learning, like every day in my own events, I'm sitting there, I'm listening, I'm writing down notes, I'm talking to industry, I'm finding out what the changes are, what the upgrades are, whatever. We can't sit there like we're a golden calf and like, oh, I got it, I got a studio, I know everything. No, 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 because every day it shifts and changes like in every industry. There's innovations, there's pioneering of you guys, your specialty, new and up, updated technology, upgrading your technology. You know, if you said, oh, I got a mic, I got a studio, I'm all set. We're never all set. We're a work in progress. So if I can, you know, impart to the audience to just think of yourself, it's not a finished product, even when you have a demo, right? Or even when you cut your commercial and it's mixed and it's mastered and it's perfect and it's beautiful. Guess what? We're casting for the next one which That's has right. changes. It's not going to be the same as what you just did. It'll have edits, changes, scripts will be thrown away. Everything is going to shift and upgrade. All right. Once again, we're talking with Lau Lapidus and uh, we're talking about the voiceover business. We're going to get into some other things here. For example, now you've, you've got your, your, your companies, you've got an agency, you've got your studio. One of the things that you're, that you've done is you've created something called the talent inner circle and mm -hmm. tell us what TIC is and why people should think about joining that community. Thanks, Dan. I'm really proud of it. I have to say, I've been sitting on it for about two years, just analyzing it. And then we all know analysis is paralysis after a while. Um, it was something that I actually didn't think of myself. A lot of my, my talent that work with us at the studio started to plant the seed of saying, Hey, I'd like to see something online. I'd like to see an online community in between coaching, in between classes, in between all the stuff mm -hmm. that's economical, that's something I can dig and something I can be a part of on a monthly, if not weekly basis. And I think you can create it online, right? And I said, oh yeah, sure. So we sat on it for a while and we said, great, let's do this. So we launched it this past August. It's almost new, brand new. It's only four months old. It's still a baby. But I'm really happy to say we have uh, almost 100 members and counting in it. And it's really exciting stuff because, of course, I'm a more is more kind of person. So I loaded the boat. We've got a, a ton of programming that we do every month. We have um, guests that come through that that are amazing people. We have A-listers. We just had a, a workshop with um, uh, Mike, pa uh, Mike Pollack, who's um, the Eggman from Sonic Hedgehog and just like really incredible producers and coaches and, and, and casting people. We had an agent come in from the Midwest and she came in and she swept up half of our, half of our crew that came into the workshop and signed them under contracts. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? It was like, anytime you're in front of someone, whether they just hear you or they see you or they meet you, you're always auditioning. Always. It could be a class, could be a workshop, could be just a chit chat, just to meet. They're always listening to you. Always. You have to think about that at all times, even if you already have an agency. Maybe you don't want a rep. Maybe you don't need any of that. They're still listening to you with that kind of ear because that's how producers are trained and casting directors live and agents make their bread and butter off right. listening to you and giving you that feedback. So the talent inner circle is really for professional development, for education, for socialization, um, and, and really just kind of level people up in saying, hey, let's make a commitment to learning more technique, getting more tools in the tool belt, having accountability people. Let's have some buddies ready to go so that I can practice my reads. I can practice my auditions. I can send an MP3 and say, do you have any background noise you're hearing? Whatever, whatever the case may be. And it's been it's been going really well. I know Dan, you're coming in to be a guest. I'm so excited. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, you know, you should have some tech people on there. I'm like, oh wait, you, you already put me in there, so I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> 
been kind of busy this month. Anyway, mm-hmm. once again, we're talking with Lal Lapidus, and we're talking about uh, the stuff that she's offering is, uh, as a coach, as an agent, and now we're talking about her talent inner circle. I always find it really, really important, especially for people in the voiceover business, because we are we're all snowflakes. Everybody's different. <laughs> we're not really competition. There's something for everybody, but there are certain things that you know, other people who have some experience can always impart and 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 creating relationships and networking with other voiceover people is really, really important. Um, so uh, once again, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room for Lau right now. Uh, how important is marketing for a voiceover career? And we sort of touched on this at the top of the hour there, but. Tell us what your thoughts are on, on marketing, because everybody's got their own idea about yeah. how to do it. Yeah, Dan, that's that's the question of the day, isn't it? I mean, I think that that big marketing word is is um, like, what's the word? Uh, it's a dark cloud or a yeah. lot of... What is head. marketing? You know, What <laughs> is marketing? Like, does that have anything to do with buying food, you know, supermarket? No. So marketing is the thing that, you have to get good at and you have to embrace in order to run a business. And I always look at voiceover talent as being entrepreneurs or or solopreneurs if they're starting it themselves. Of course, we all started ourselves. So how do we do it? We have to start thinking about creating community. I have uh, seven pillars that I created to to doing that. And one is like community, community. How do we create that so that we can always call out to each other, rely upon each other, help each other uh, and get work for each other? I I would say probably seven or eight times out of 10, I'm getting my work through referrals. Referrals are really huge in our industry as you as you age and (laughs) as you stay and you have longevity. Um, You're going to get more and more referrals to build your client list. But that doesn't come cold. It comes typically because you've put down the the groundwork for your first five years or six years or however long you're working at it to say, hey, world, I'm here. This is who I am. This is what I love. And this is my value. Here's my value proposition. Let me just share that with you. And one exercise I do as a coach is to say, to discover your value proposition, you know, take 12 words or less, no more than 12 words. Even that's a lot for us to remember, almost like a tagline, like make it memorable to someone. Describe what is your value as a voiceover talent and repeat it over and over and over again. So when you do pitch yourself or you email yourself or you do a cold marketing, you always have that value proposition in there and reminding you that it changes. Again, it doesn't stay the same. It changes oftentimes based on the clients that you're target marketing. So it can't, it can't just be, this is what I am, this is who I am, and that's it. Like stay static and kind of militant. You gotta be very flexible. You gotta be like that. You know, I always say you got to be like that really tall, huge building in Chicago that's massive and goes up to the sky. And it's the foundation has got to be very, very cement strong. Right. But the higher up you go, the more you're going to sway in the wind and the more you're going to flex because there's high winds up there and you're up there working on the 47th floor. You're going to shift with the winds. That's what we do as voiceover talent and as as actors is we have to shift with the trends and the winds in marketing and not fight it but embrace it and say how does my value proposition have synergy with what the trends are doing right now where do i fit in that's like my job to figure that out so then i can articulate that and present that to to prospects absolutely Once again, we're talking with Lal Lapidus, and we're talking about the voiceover business and marketing, and she mentioned referrals and all that. But we're going to take a quick break right now, and we'll be right back with your questions right after these messages. So don't go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voiceover Body Shop. From voiceoveressentials.com, it's the relationship savior the multicolor LED VO recording sign. Not just a stock on the air or recording sign. It's our exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 color beacon tells everybody at home, which is currently everybody, 
hey, I'm auditioning, recording, podcasting, narrating, or broadcasting here, and a few moments of relative quiet would be very much appreciated. What's more, the wafer-thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options, from color to brightness, flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up your own personal codes. Red means I'm recording, blue playing back, green, it's a wrap. Plug in the 7-foot-long cord and hang it on a doorknob or wall hook using the included chain. Order yours now for just $69.95 from voiceoveressentials.com. And for easy giving for the voice talent in your family, get a Voice Over Essentials gift card, too. And speaking of great sponsors, how about Source Elements, huh? Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect and so many other amazing tool sets that will really integrate your studio and your production world into the rest of the world so you can have a really efficient, productive workflow. I was just the other day looking at the Netflix production uh, FAQ section. There's actually a whole section deep on their website for anybody that contributes any content to Netflix. Guess what product was listed on their website? Source Connect. Um, it's, it is definitely a tool that is now heavily, heavily integrated into so many of the workflows of the top level of the voiceover business. And that's probably why you want to be familiar with it. Are you ready for it today? You may not be, but it's a perfect time to get familiar. So go over to source-elements.com, get familiar, get set up with at least a trial, if not the subscription, if you're feeling like you're getting closer to that level of work, and become familiar. If you have any trouble, their support is absolutely second to none. We want to thank them for their support. Thank you, Source Elements. And we'll be right back with the rest of the show after this. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. And with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. All righty, and we're back here at VoiceOver Body Shop, and we got a bunch of questions from our massive audience that is out there. Lots of people watching tonight, and that's what we like to see. Yeah. And uh, let's see here. What, why don't we start off with uh, Grace Newton there, George? You got it. This one from Grace. Uh, she says, I've been advised to get a jingle demo done. Is there a demand for jingles, and does anyone come in mind who, would, who could record and produce it? Who comes to mind? Oh, that's an interesting question. I very rarely get that question because on the East Coast, we just don't, we don't hear a lot about that. That traditionally has been more of a Midwest to West Coast kind of thing to do. Oh. I'm not so sure it matters where you live now, but yeah. um, uh, that wasn't something that was in our realm. And it's, it's not, honestly, Grace, it's not something we really handle because our, our market is much more straight streamlined commercial work we don't really get into jingles at mcbo mm -hmm. agency but i would suggest that before you do anything you know talk with some really great coaches who specialize in jingles they specialize as singers and they can help train you uh and work with you as a singer as well as a voiceover talent because that's very specialized there's a lot of singing coaches out there but they may have no idea about what a jingle is or what voiceover talent really does. So I think you need that crossover of a great VO coach who also does jingles. And if you can't find it, then just get a really good jingle coach, <laughs> someone who can help you with the singing and a voiceover coach that can partner together and work together to, for a common end game 
which is going to be your demo that houses the best jingle delivery that you can do. Yeah, and they have their own jingle. Jingle coach, jingle coach, jingle. <laughs> 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 That's right. <laughs> Uh, Mike E H sixty six on YouTube has says uh, and asks with all this economic doom surrounding us, what do you see for the voiceover industry? Put on your oh. crystal, take out your crystal ball and and tell us what you see. Hmm, I should give you a weird like accent with that, <laughs> right, Mike? I see. Listen, ball. here's what I see. Here's what I see. Yes. Okay. We, we're in inflation, we get the recession, we see everything media hype. Okay, it's true, I get it. Now let's move that aside for a second. And let's think about your business. Let's think about how you launch and how you grow your business. We all have launched, I know when I launched my studio, Mike, it was the first like biggest recession under the Obama years that I've ever seen in the history of our country. And if I thought, oh, I shouldn't be doing this because there's a big recession and there's no chance for work and whatever, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you today, right? So we have to be on one hand, super researched, very smart about what's going on in our economy um, and what, what the climate is in the environment, economically speaking. But then we also have to be paradoxically a cockeyed optimist and think, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to go to my business plan. I'm going to go to my model that I created. I'm going to go to the five-year plan because I'll tell you in five years, things change. Things don't stay the same. They change and you have good years and bad years that ebbs and flows, ups and downs. Um, so you have to know that things shift and change over time. You have to stay the course. You have to get super steady and you have to not worry too much about that dark economy. You have to say, okay, I can float within it. I can live within it. I can shift my rates along the way as I need to, but I absolutely will survive. I absolutely will work. And I'm telling you, I have a lot of colleagues right now who've been in business for a long time, Mike, who have raised their prices now. All righty. Right? Uh, you get the question I from Glenn. Glenn Lindner. You got it. Do you still prefer live studio as opposed to a Zoom when doing a demo? That's part one of his questions. Um, I, I'm, I'm imagining you're talking about when producing a demo um, slash coaching a demo. Um, yeah, because I'm old school. Yeah, I'm old school. I always, I always prefer doing a demo. I'm, I'm doing a... I just finished up. I wrapped a big LA showcase that I co-produced the last four days. I could have done it online. It could have been virtual for sure. I wanted to get on a plane. I wanted to come out to an LA studio. I wanted to have the experience, the vibe, and be with people in a live space. So if I have the choice, I'll always go to the live space and be with the folks. But I love having the technology and being able to zip online like I'm doing tonight and talk with my friends and not worry about having to get in the car. So I feel like it's the best of both worlds. I get it. Totally. We agree. I mean, <laughs> it's revolutionized what I do. Of course, working re remotely is incredibly effective. Um, mm -hmm. How about New England voiceover work? What, do you, what would you recommend to attack that particular market? Do you have any experience in the Boston area? Well, you know what's so funny about that, George? The whole reason, I don't even know if I answered your question, Dan, <laughs> that you asked 20 minutes ago. All right, I'm going to answer it now. So, um, so the balance of the studio and then MCVO, we launched, I launched MCVO right at the height of COVID. So literally in the middle of COVID, we were in lockdown and I thought, and I'm Boston based. I thought, gee, what do we need in the market? Because when we open a business, we always think, what is the problem to solve here? What's the need to fill? And I'm not in the healthcare field and I'm not in other fields, I'm in the entertainment. So in New England, I thought, gee, what's the opening? What's the need? And it was voiceover. We had no voiceover division in any agency uh, umbrella 
in New England. I couldn't believe it, but we just don't. We get some voiceover through, but we don't have voiceover agents. So I said, okay, then I need to become one. So I, long story short, I, I collabed with my dear friend and colleague, Tim Ayers. He's the owner of Model Club Inc. based out of Boston. He represents actors, on camera, on camera actors and models for 20 years. And I said, we need this. What do you think? He said, let's do it. I don't know anything about it. You're going to have to do it. So I launched the division under the umbrella of Model Club Inc. And that's where it lives. I'm the lead agent. I run the division. I stock the roster. I handle the auditions. And then he'll come in and help with negotiation of contracts when we need that help. And sometimes we do. But here's the, here's the amazing thing. Bottom line, it's not even New England anymore. It's not even localized. Now we're national. We represent some of the top talent from New York, LA, everywhere in between. And we have five countries of talent that we represent now. That's the beauty of voiceover. So it starts in New England. It was launched out of New England, but it's definitely a baby of the universe now. All righty. A uh, question from Terry Briscoe. Hi, guys. Hi, Lau. Lau, I constantly get auditions where they want the conversational rate. Uh, but when I see the commercials on TV, I very rarely hear what I would call a conversational read. What should we actually be delivering in these auditions? Oh, wow. That's a part two. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, it's a loaded question in that our industry is incredibly subjective. So if you start at the get-go by thinking, this is what they're looking for stylistically. This is what they want. Well, why do they want this? All right. We can guess that oftentimes the millennial generation, which is now the largest population in the United States, oftentimes is appealing to the millennial generation for the products and services that are being put out in the commercial market. Um, the generation is what we call digital natives. So meaning you're growing up on a computer. You're literally growing up on a computer. So I think stylistically, we organically wanted to have face-to-face -face communication where it was going away. It was leaving us. People were not having conversations. They were online. They weren't seeing each other. They were texting, emailing, chatting, all of that stuff. So I think organically, that's where it grew out of. Artificially, what is natural stylistically and conversational may or may not reflect what we do in real life. It may be a reasonable facsimile of it, but it may not be real life. It's similar to an on-camera actor that stylistically does a scene like a Woody Allen film who is the father of heightened naturalism in film. He was the first one that did real looking stuff in film. Um, but the truth is it's not real. We've got cameras everywhere. We've got lights everywhere. We got people with scripts everywhere. It just seems real. It looks real. So I think stylistically, we're trying to go for something that's connected, something that psychologically makes us feel like we're being listened to and something that is recognizable. But it may or may not be something you do in your kitchen. If that Good makes point. sense. It does actually make sense. <laughs> Uh, and Terry goes on with a part two, because he could. Uh, if you're all repre already represented and can't be signed by the agency, can you still be on the roster of another agency, I think is what he's asking. Yeah, so basically the way it works is this, is that if you are signed exclusively, you would know that because there would be a clause in your paper contract. You have to have a paper contract, a physical contract. Um, it would say exclusive. There would be exclusive wording in that contract. And you would know that you're exclusive and you're exclusive to the particular geographical regions, which you have to know what those are. Meaning I can't, let's say I'm exclusive in the Midwest. I can't work with any other agencies, say, 100 miles within the radius of this Midwest agency because I'm exclusive to them. Outside of that, I can. So you have to get really clear. Are you exclusive as a talent? Is there something in writing? And what is the geographical reference point for that? If you're freelance, it means you, you're not beholden to anyone. You can work with anyone anywhere. But 
oftentimes you will be asked to sign a freelance contract. It gets a little confusing. Like, why am I signing a contract? You're signing a contract because it's a psychological bond. They want to know that you take it seriously working with them. Like MCVO is a freelance agency right now. Eventually we may go exclusive, but we're freelance. And we, and we ask you to sign a contract that you've got a broadcast quality studio, that you're going to behave yourself and act professionally, that you're going to show up when you say you're going to show up and that, you know, you're not, you're not going to, you know, do something crazy. So, so it's a psychological bond that says, I'm here to do this. We all understand this and that's what we're going to do. But the freelancer can do that with six other agencies or wherever they want to go, they can do that. And they should do that. I mean, that's, that's how you start making your living as a talent. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And sort of on that line, David Lee Hawks asks, how would you recommend working with multiple coaches or would you recommend working with multiple coaches? Gosh. These are such great questions. You guys have the best people ever. <laughs> They're really engaged. Uh, yes. All right. So, of course, obviously, it's a subjective answer. Everyone's going to give you a, a unique and different answer according to their own experience. Um, I think that there are certain coaches and certain instructors and programs that do not want you to work with other coaches and instructors because they have a particular methodology that they're imparting to you and they want you to stay focused on that and not get confused with conflicting processes. There's a lot, especially like if you go to graduate school, places like that that are structured through school and professional training programs, they only want you to commit to their program. Um, a lot of coaches may not care. They honestly may not care. You pay them by the hour or however they wanna be paid. And then they say, here's your work, here's your homework. And then I'll, you know, do what do as I do with you if you return. So I think it depends on the coach and it depends on the level of commitment you're making with the coach. I, I do think as a coach myself, I do think there's a great benefit to working with a team of coaches. We have a team of coaches at our studio. I'm not the only coach. Like I, I've got eight coaches and the on the ground level of Boston. And then we've got New York coaches and then we've got LA coaches. And because you need, you need perspectives from different markets and different backgrounds. There's someone who's very particular to say audiobook and audiobook interpretation and all of that good versus commercial, which is very, very different. So it can be helpful to have different coaches for different specialties and different genres. You don't have to, you don't need to, but keep it open as an option. You have to feel like you have to get married to one person. Absolutely. Once again, we're talking with Lau Lapidus and we've got your questions here. Uh, Catherine Campion on YouTube uh, asks, I book most of my work off demos or auditioning against a handful of talent. This is industry standard for most markets out of North America. How much are you securing work for talent off demos? That's an excellent question. One I always that's, a, that, that's such an awesome question. Sometimes I don't even know the answer to that because when we um, invite a talent into the agency, Kat, we will list them and have them create profiles on our breakdown services so that pr producers, if they want to come in and listen, they can listen to you if they're interested in hearing the demo. So we can't, we don't track that. We can't track that. We don't know who's listening to what, who's coming in at any given time. We only know with direct communication when they reach out to us, oh, we're interested in Cat. We want to book Cat. Do we know if they've listened to your demo? I really don't know. But I'll take, I'll take an educated guess and I'll say, in what we do on our end, more than, more than not, they are not listening to those demos. If they're quick turnaround auditions, they're getting to the read right away and they're focusing on the read. If they have a longer, more open turnaround time for you, they'll say, hey, send us the demos. We just want to hear the demos. We're not sending out a script yet. We don't want to hear reads yet. We just want to hear the demos. So in our private client base, like I have producers that come to us from all over the country and say, I got three right now. I got one in Miami. I have one in the Texas market. They'll want to hear demos. They'll say, yeah, if they're pro. They'll have a demo and just get the flavor of their voice before I send out a script. So to answer your question, Kat, I'd say probably 75% is um, your profile listed 
up there and then getting the audition and then submitting that. And then probably the other 25 or 30 percent is going to be submitting your demos before you actually get the reads. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, you've got one from Gerard McGuire. Right, we'll jump to Gerard. Uh, what yes. percentage of jobs uh, uh, you send out or do that you send out? or union that's the first question oh i get i i get asked that question a lot actually and i love you i'm pro union i'm all over that we're signatory of course um we see more we say we're seeing more and more union jobs come through which is really great i don't actually know the percentage i'll take an educated guess and i'll say probably i'll say probably 30 to 40 percent is union coming through, whether it be through casting networks or whether it be through a private client or whatever. I do find though that our our client list, our private client list, they don't know, they don't care as much. Um, they're very much about like just find the talent. You know what I mean? Just find the talent, just get us the talent. Um, the unionized jobs are much more structured coming from places like Actors Access, Casting Networks, places that have a, a healthy understanding and respect oftentimes of what that means when they're getting union talent submissions. But it's it's hopeful. It's really hopeful. There's more and more coming through now than there was like a year or, a year or two ago. Yeah. In part two of that, Yes, part two. Which is a great question also, because everybody asks about <laughs> this one. Uh, are there any P2P or pay-to-play pay sites worth the money, in your opinion? Hey, listen, it's a hot topic. I know there's a lot of controversy over it, and people feel very... Um, you know, I, I honestly, here's what I think. I think like a business person. I think like an entrepreneur. I think like a business person. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know if you can see me now. Go and get work where you want to get work, whatever direction that work comes from. Sometimes it will come from a pay-to-play site. Sometimes it won't. It's like it's like developing a private client list. If I go in this particular genre and this particular direction, you know, will I get work? I really don't know. I have to test it out. I have to test the market. I have to see. Um, what, you know, what, what's my booking ratio? How many, I would say how, what you invest in time and money is what you're going to get out of it. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like what you're going to get out of it. And that could be in any direction. That could be in cold calls. That could be in uh, marketing submissions to lists of agents. That could be in pay to plays. That could be in, maybe you're going to a lot of conferences this year, a lot of great conferences out there. Well, you know, there's a lot of uh, work to be had at those conferences. So the time that you put in, the, uh, you know, what you're spending should be a, an ROI. There should be a return on your investment over a period of time. Can we measure that? I can't measure that because that has to do with your investment and the level of time that you're putting into it. And then you'll be able to really track that over a year or two. You'll be able to really see that. And I'm a big fan of like, try everything. See what works for you. Before we go. Yeah, we have one We need more. to know how you get, how you get, how do you <laughs> we get, get to in work with, with you? Wow, how on, do we man. work with you? <laughs> Jeff oh, wants to Oh, how do you work with us? Oh my goodness, it's so easy. All you have to do is email us. I mean, you can DM us on social media. That's fine too, awesome. But the most direct is just, Email us your demos. We take demo submissions all the time. We're constantly growing the roster. We have about 400 of the top talent, still very much looking for diversity talent. There's a lot of cool trends out there. We need uh, a language. We need bi and trilingual people. We need um, ages, different ages. So don't, you know, don't give up before you start. You know what I mean? Like, make sure you market, make sure you submit. If you have great professionally produced demos i want to hear them send them over to me lollapita's company boom and subject line it uh mcvo submission and that way we know it's going to go into review for the agency if that's what you want to do very good well wow thanks so much for joining us tonight and uh and giving us some of your expertise and uh, we really appreciate what you do in the business and it's always a pleasure to see you whenever i get the chance which is not a whole lot but now you're in the same town. We should get together. Yeah. All righty. 
Okay, we're going to take a break, and we're going to finish things up here, and we'll be right back. Thanks, Lau. Great job. Thanks, guys. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is VoiceOverExtra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back, and our thanks again to Lau Lapidus for enlightening us on the kind of stuff that she does, which is fascinating. She uh, likes to pack it in. That was a lot of information. It huh? was. so yeah, High-value content. Yeah. Fortunately, you can always watch the replay and take even better notes. Now, That's right. <laughs> which is one of the great things about the fact that we have the, this will be on all week on Facebook and on our website. So, uh, all week and forever. And, and <laughs> you can watch it. Anytime you want That's by just right. going to our website because they're all there as well. Well, next week on this very show, unless you're watching live, in which case you should hang out and stay because George and I go into Tech Talk right after this. And uh, we'd love to get your home studio uh, tech questions. So stay tuned for that. Um, you got any webinars coming up or anything? Nothing. Uh, nothing is... Uh uh solidified at the moment but we should be having one come up the first week of january it's going to be about new tech tools new things to revolutionize your business but if you want to check it out see when we go live on that just go to v uh actually my website george the dot tech slash webinars and on any services you can get 10 percent off with the coupon code during checkout of v-o-b-s fan 10 all right thanks for asking all right and of course, whirly gigs. Yeah. <laughs> oh By the time you guys see the show, it's not, it's still not too late. No, it's still not too late. <laughs> okay. I, my dad might be like, no, no, I don't want to sell anymore. <laughs> but if you want to email, if you like whirly gigs, those cute things you put in your yard with a propeller and it makes little things move around, little animations. My dad loves making them and he has a bunch for sale. Just email him fairweatherwhirligigs at Comcast. Dot net and by the way that's spelled w h i r l i g i g s that's the proper spelling of whirly gigs so all right take a look okay uh let's see what else we got here we have of course our donors of the week we have a new one yay <laughs> like grace newton hey robert leadham steve chandler Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Thomas Pinto. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. A Uncle Roy. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Lee Penny, that is. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. 
Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Shauna Pennington Bear, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, hey and Diana, and Sandra Manwiller. All right. Hey, join our mailing list too. That way you know exactly what's going to be coming on. And I send that out right before the show, maybe an hour or so. You're like, oh, yeah. I was going to go bowling, but no, I'd rather watch voiceover body shop live. So that's, you know, does anybody still go bowling? Uh, Apparently. Okay, yeah, there were, there, it's never been more expensive. I can tell you that. That's for darn sure. <laughs> uh, we need to thank our wonderful sponsors like Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials. Voiceover extra. Source elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and, and WorldVoices.com. Voices.org. Worldvoices.org, the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. Our thanks to Jeff Holman for great chat room duty tonight and getting us all those great questions for Lau Lapidus. And uh, Sue Merlino for <laughs> surviving all that life has to give her and us. So, Thank uh, you, Sue. <laughs> yeah, when she's, she's our technical trooper. director. And of course, Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. Anyway, we're going to re-rack for a tech talk, so stick around, get us your tech questions, get them in the chat room, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube Live, and George and I will be happy to address those and give you an honest answer about it, as opposed to all the other garbage you'll find on the Internet. Um, you know, this is not an easy business. That's why we're here every week bringing you the experts and the people that really know how to succeed in this business and, of course, the technological stuff, because we've actually come to the conclusion that if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Stay tuned for Tech Talk. Have a great week, everybody.